2022 is just around the corner and you know what that means? It's time to get serious about your visibility strategy so that you can attract the high paying clients and opportunities that you have dreamed about. You don't wanna wait till 2022. So get started today with our masterclass that we have prepared just for you. Publicize Like a Pro is a masterclass designed to bring out the influencer in you. It doesn't matter how many social media followers you have, it's time to come to the forefront and share your brilliance. I invite you to join me and two amazing women entrepreneurs for three nights of teaching, November 9th through 11th, 2021, for a masterclass called Publicize Like a Pro. We will be teaching you all about brand messaging, social media strategy, and publicity strategy that you can implement right away. So you don't want to miss this course and it's going to position you for where you want to be in 2022. We've included a special link below in the show notes. So make sure you check it out and we will see you in class November 9th through 11th for Publicize Like a Pro. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Confidence and Creativity. I am your host, Samantha McCoy, and today coming to the podcast and YouTube, we have Kiara J. Mason. Kiara is the co-owner and content marketing strategist of MTM Creative Imaging & Co., a full service social media marketing agency that she and her husband, Jared, operate together. Kiara is the proud mom of a daughter, River, and son, Levi. Something that sets Kiara apart that I love about her story is that she is a trained social worker and she uses her clinical and people skills to get to the heart of her client's message to help them reach their targeted audience. In 2016, Kiara and her husband started a YouTube channel called Meet the Masons and was later it was picked up by a television network and brand partnerships started to come in. As the partnerships came, she and her husband decided to start their own agency to help other business owners increase their visibility online. So she is a true pro, everyone. Kiara is very open about the struggles she has had as well, and she has used her story to bless others. Her experience with postpartum depression led her to create Mommy Shower Inc., a nonprofit that seeks to shower mothers with empowerment, resources, education, and community in their prenatal and postpartum stages to ensure that mothers are prioritizing their well-being and walking in the fullness of who they are. Kiara uses her expertise and joy to serve high-achieving, well-respected female leaders and equip them to put their best image forward online and scale their business through social media marketing. Everyone, I introduce Kiara J. Mason. (laughs) Hello, hello. That was a mouthful. I was like, geez. (laughs) Yes, welcome to the show. Yeah, I I had to give you all of your your accolades, your props. We love doing that over here. We have to let everyone know about the awesomeness of the guests that we have. And I just want to say, Kiara, thank you so much for even taking the time for this episode today. I know you have a lot going on in this season. We are going to unpack some of that. So I do not take it lightly that you uh, were able to, to give up your time tonight. Yeah, absolutely. It's really my honor to be here that you recognize me as someone that you would want on your platform. So thank you so much. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. So let's get into this. How did you make your entry into social media marketing? I do not know of another social worker that I've met who has made that pivot into social media marketing. So I'm so curious to know how that started for you, what sparked your interest, and and also how you identified those transferable skills. Um, Social work to social media marketing, wow. So I never thought that I would go into marketing, had no plans. I got my bachelor's and master's 
master's in social work. And really I was contemplating if I wanted to get my license in social work, um, but I was working in the community, helping moms and parents to get um, you know, subsidized daycare services. I was counseling teenagers in high school setting, doing what I planned to do and what I love to do. And then eventually the burnout started to happen. Um, when you recognize that, especially in helping professions is very, it happens a lot. And um, it was starting to happen to me. And I just grew to be very unsatisfied in my career. And I'm like, but I went to school for this. This is my passion. This is what I want to do. And then eventually I saw myself crying on the way to work almost every day mm. because I just dreaded having to go somewhere that I just no longer found passion in. Um, and so during that time, my husband was like, I think we should, you know, we should start a marketing agency. I was like, have you lost your mind? Literally, have you lost your mind? That has nothing to do with my life. I am not doing that. Um, we saw this coaching program that would help us do it. And I was like, um, absolutely not. And my husband was actually in insurance. And so um, long story short, I finally said yes. And I just felt this nudging from God that said, hey, just go for it. Um, because I knew that the bulk of the responsibility of the business would be on me. Because my husband, he was satisfied in his career, making six figures plus, and it was me who wasn't satisfied, but he was pushing me to do something new. And I was like, you know what? We've been on YouTube for a while. Um, we've gotten results. Let's just let's just go for it. Let's help other business owners. And that was the start of me going into marketing. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. So so when you decided to make that shift and that pivot. What gave you the confidence to know that you were ready to actually start offering the service? Because I know your YouTube channel was doing really well, but it's one thing we all know it's one thing for for your business to be doing well. What gave you the confidence to say, OK, now I can teach this to people? Yeah, it was um, really it was God, because I say this all the time, it takes audacity to go out and say, hey, I can help a business owner make their business better. And you've never been in business yourself. That's crazy. So what we started off with was just helping other business owners that we knew personally. They allowed us to come and manage their social media to really build up um, our, our resume and what we could do. And once we recognized that, oh, this is working, people are getting followers from what we're doing, then we recognize, hey, we have a framework, we have a strategy, let's build out our packages and let's move forward. Um, and I think that was really one of the things that really got us into doing that. Because prior to that, honestly, I did a whole bunch of things. But we finally found out that MTM Creative Imaging and Co was, you know, where we should go. Yes, yeah, that's that's an excellent story. Excellent story. So let's talk about that that transfer of skills from social work to social media marketing. Where did you see that those similarities, or what things has helped you in marketing now that you you were practicing as a social worker? Yeah, so in social work, when I like to define what a social worker is, because a lot of times people aren't really educated on what it is. They think that we all just take kids out of the home, and that is not the case. So um, there are psychologists who primarily focus on the study of the mind of a person, right? And then psychiatry, they, you know, study that as well, but they use medicine to aid, you know, the behavioral or the mindset of a person. But a social worker looks at the environment. They look at relationships they look at their past history they look at their mind as well and I love the holistic perspective of a social worker and we we go into many different fields so in healthcare, in you know nonprofit, even in the business sector you will see social workers in the military everywhere um, but what I recognized during this time I learned how to counsel because social workers are actually mental health counselors as well. And during that time, when you're counseling, you have to be active listeners and you have to know how to meet the client where they are, right? And that transfer over to marketing because you have to listen and do your targeted, you have to do your market research, right? You have to understand what does your audience need from you that you're offering. You have to be able to listen. You have to get that data. And then once you do that, now you create a heart connection with your, your potential clients. And I recognize that, wow, I did this in counseling, but I didn't know what well, I recognize afterwards that this transfers over in business as well. And it works. And so that's when I recognized it. Wow, that that's awesome. I, I think that is so amazing how you were able to identify 
how those skills transfer over. So I definitely just want to encourage even anybody who's listening or watching now that, you know, you don't have to stay in one lane. Like even if that is your skill set and you're you are an expert in that area, that doesn't mean that you can't move to something else. If there's something else that you feel like you're called to do, definitely identify those transferable skills. Think about what you've learned and how you've grown and think about how you can apply it to to the next thing. So I think that that's amazing. Thank yes. You. So, okay, so let's, um, I'm sure everybody is wondering now, you are here with a tiara on and a sash on. So can we talk about what has happened to you recently and where um, all of that, that decor is, is coming from? <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I was recently awarded Miss Mompreneur 2021 through Miss and Mrs. Corporate America. So it is a pageant um, for moms who mean business. So recognizing moms who are in entrepreneurship and they are involved in the community. And I was honored <laughs> to be um, to be recognized as that mom. So it's a, a national competition and we actually apply by application and you apply, you get your letters of recommendation and all those things. And and then they finally tell you that you're the winner. Um, well, they told me that I was a winner. And um, I was just so blown away and so, so grateful to be recognized because I was a social worker. You know, I, I, I didn't have kids. You know, I planned on having kids one day and God actually gave me two kids. And I, I didn't even ask to be a business owner, but that was God's dream for me. So to be recognized in this capacity just affirms that God, you know, I'm right, right where I'm supposed to be. And I think a lot of times we, and I'm shifting a little bit, I think a lot of times we get scared of launching into that new thing because it's so off from the plan that we have for ourselves, not recognizing that God has crowns for you for where he wants you to go. So I think I answered the question, but. <laughs> yes, no, th that, that was excellent. That was excellent. But I, I even love where you were going because I really love the confidence that you have just in your, not only your natural giftings, but also the spiritual confidence that you have, because you have an ability to take what God has given you and also encourage and inspire and affirm other people in what God has gifted them to do. So we can, if, if you don't mind us just pivoting a little bit and talking yeah. about that, how did you gain even that that confidence because i know that you serve leaders you serve you know six seven maybe even eight figure business owners so how did you gain even that courage to to serve leaders in that way that's such an excellent question and most people wouldn't believe it when i said that i was the most shy person i ever met um, I was not the person I had social anxiety. I did not want to speak before people. I was scared, but God always found a way to pull me to the forefront. He always called leadership out of me, even being in middle school. And I was the, the, um, the co-captain of the cheerleading squad. I mean, I wasn't that great. But I, I was just, I, and I was called to be the 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 co-captain. So I was like, okay, let's go for it. And then when I was in high school, I was the vice president of the gospel and cultural choir. So it was just like I wasn't asking for this. And if it was if it were up to me, I would just serve in a background. But um, growing up, I recognized that I had a voice, and I found my voice through singing initially, and that was in middle school. So you know, back in the day when we'd get on the phone with our friends, like sing this song, sing "Angel of Mine" or something from Monica, and then we would ask our best friend, "Hey, does this sound good?" So my friends hyped me up and I was like, oh, okay, I can sing, I can sing. So I went into high school. I was like, okay, I'm gonna join the choir because I just didn't know that I could sing. So I went into it and um, I had an amazing instructor who is Miss Deborah McDuffie, who's one of the R&B giants actually in producing. And um, she raised me classically to sing. And that was when I got acquainted with my voice singing wise. And when I got to college, I had a mentor because I would sing background vocals in Orlando, sing on different worship teams. And sometimes I would lead worship. And my mentor pulled me to the side one day, I'll never forget. And she said, you're going to be known for your voice mm -hmm. and it's not through singing. 
And I was like, what? Because I planned on being a songwriter, okay? I was going to be a songwriter. I was about to get my EP ready. And um, she was like, yeah, no one's going to know you for your singing voice. It's going to be your voice through speaking. So at that moment, I was like, wow. I ended up becoming the chaplain of the Gospel and Cultural Choir at UCF and also through the Black Female Development Circle. And I had to speak every single week and give them a word of encouragement. That's where I was building my muscle. And for me, it was... I naturally I wanted to encourage people in the word of God so that's where I kind of got that spiritual encouragement but it cultivated me as a speaker and then after that it was just like oh this is what I do this is who I am and that's what I was known for so I just kept going with it that is excellent that's excellent and I I love how you even talked about just the preparation because everything that we do in life is preparation for what we're doing next. And so just even taking advantage of the platforms where, you know, maybe you were not, well, obviously you were not on this in the same platforms that you have right now, but still the platforms that you had even from years ago, that was when your gift was really being cultivated and developed. So I really love how you you were able to use that because you never know what what God's going to do with what you have. You never know. But can I say this? I recognize that he uses it all. And when I say all, I mean every ounce of it. The areas of your life where you recognize that was random. Why did I go through that? Or that breakup? Or you, Mm -hmm. you know, you remember failing an assignment or something like that. Or you're randomly helping this person and it's outside of your field. And it all comes back full circle. And that's what I recognize in life that God literally wastes nothing if we choose to surrender our entire life to him. And And I absolutely love that. Speaking of God using everything that you have, one thing that I really enjoy about your brand and your personal brand is how you have really defined the things that you do. And they're actually five M's, right? So Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can remember them all. Let me know if I miss them. So (laughs) I remember you, you actually did a series uh, recently called 31 lessons that you learned. And it was all centered around your five M's. So you had marriage, ministry, marketplace, mentoring, and wait, marriage, ministry, marketplace, mentoring, motherhood. Motherhood. Yes, I couldn't leave that out, right? (laughs) (laughs) And those are not the order she had. So I'll let her tell the order, but I just wanted to make sure I remember, remember the M's. So can you just talk about how you got to that point of specifically identifying or kind of encapsulating your um, values or, or your core pillars in those M's and then also what led you to do that, that live series? Yeah, so like I said, great, great transition um, of God using everything. Once we start our YouTube channel, we really did it to um, just show our life as a married couple because we had an interesting story. We only had maybe went on five dates. We met February, 2013. We met um, and got married November, 2013. We had a three week engagement. And so people had questions like, are you crazy? How is this married life? What is this like? And so we're like, hey, let's just do a YouTube channel and just share our life with everyone because we knew it was a God thing. And we're like, okay, well, let's just answer questions. And so marriage, straight on was one of our things that we talked about. And through our YouTube channel, I went over my prenatal and postpartum journey with my firstborn daughter, my firstborn daughter, um, River, and going through that journey, I recognized, wow, I really love motherhood. And then obviously I own a marketing agency. And then I have a mentoring program called Show Up and Be Great. And I've been mentored by so many amazing people. That's just near and dear to my heart. And then ministry is just who I am. And so I was just like, hey, these are the things I just can't stop talking about. It's who I am. And I'm just going to make my brand and my pillars based off of these five ones. So when it comes to the 31 lesson series, um, I was literally just working on some client work one day and it was on a Friday and Holy Spirit was like, I need you to go live for 31 days straight because your birthday is in 31 days. And I was like, what? And I looked at the calendar. I was like, oh my gosh, my birthday is in 31 days. I wasn't thinking about my birthday. I was just tired. It was a Friday. I was just ready to be done with work. And I was like, okay, challenge accepted. 
because I knew I wanted to do something cool for my birthday. Um, I didn't really get to celebrate 30 because, you know, COVID. And so I was like, I want to do something special. And God had the special thing for me, which required work. But uh, I shared 31 lessons that I've learned up until the age of 31. And it was really phenomenal because I always review and um, go over what went well the, the past year, what have you. So being able to document that journey was really special for me. Wow. Yes. And if you all missed that, I think she still has it up. I don't know how long she's going to keep it up on IG, but so you might want to catch it because I'm sure she may take it down and probably use it for something else. But, oh, yeah. but for right now, it is it is up on um, on Instagram Live and I really enjoyed I caught most of them um, and I really enjoyed that that series. So what has really been kind of the takeaway for you as far as just, you know, where you started in social work to, to where you are now, what do you feel like is kind of a through line for you where you have just witnessed everything that God has done then and, and kind of what is the thing that you would say has defined your, your journey to this point? Oh, I absolutely say walking by faith, honestly. Is, it's not ignoring those ideas, those crazy ideas that you get or the thoughts that you get. And you're like, nobody, nobody would do that. Why, why would I have that idea? I'm the crazy person that says, no, I'm just going to go with it and see what happens. I even created a group coaching program called Ideas to Invoices because I understand it's so important for people to honor the ideas that God gives you. I don't believe in coincidence. And that's the thing. There are some people who do, but I don't. I believe that God gives us and imparts in us certain things because he sees us capable. Um, he wouldn't give us that idea if he didn't think that we would do it. He did yeah. not give me an idea to create a zoo. Why? I don't like animals. Not that I don't like animals. Don't get me wrong. But I'm, that's just not my area of interest. And that's not in my five M's. But he told me to start a mentorship program. He told me to start a, a nonprofit for moms. That's within my five M's. I was very um, sure of my identity. You know, I have my own process, but at the end of the day, God gives us ideas and we should honor them. And when you honor them, you walk by faith, knowing that your feelings have nothing to do with it. Mm. Your circumstances have nothing to do with it. Your bank account has nothing to do with it. Your current situation, even your current friendships and relationships have nothing to do with what God has assigned to you. But you have to just say, hey, God, I believe you. And he's a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. And so through that, I believe that God just honored every time I walk by faith because he was like, man, she trusts me. I can give her more. And God does the same thing for all of us. Yes, yes, that's excellent. So Kiara, for you, what are maybe, maybe if you want to give one sign or a couple of signs, how do you recognize God's voice from your voice, from other people's voices, from good ideas? What have you, what have you learned about, about God's voice for you? I learned that people hear God in different ways and it's okay. So not a lot of people actually audibly hear the voice of God. Sometimes it's a knowing, like I just know, or it's a feeling, or it's a sensing, you know, or God confirms certain things through other people, maybe your pastors, a friend, honestly, anything, you may go through a scripture. That's one of his, you know, my favorite ways to hear from God is through scriptures. When he gives me a scripture and it's like, oh, boom. That just like laid out my whole life. And then I hear that scripture repeated by someone else or on YouTube or what have you. There are so many different ways that you can hear from God. But I always say that um, the voice of God lines up with the word. If it's outside of what the word says, then that's not God, period. Um, and even if it's an idea that you have, why not run with it? He gave us a soul, which I believe that's where our emotions and our imaginations lie. So I say, go with it. God can use it all. As long as it's, you know, within his word, nothing outlandish. Like I'm not about to go create a strip club because I'm just, hey, that's not my thing. That's not my ministry. Okay. Um, but I think that a lot of times people are like wondering, okay, is this God? Is it not Go with the voice and you will see. I believe that God is always obligated and he gives you a loud resounding no. Okay. Mm. If this a no, he will tell you no. But what does the word of God says? It says the just shall live by faith. We should walk by faith and not by sight. Meaning walk with the voice that you hear. And if he says no, he will stop you or redirect you. But a lot of times we don't even walk. 
we're just like, well, what is this? And we stay stuck. So we don't hear mm. the next instruction. We don't hear even more because we never did the walking with that initial idea in that initial voice. So that's my little spiel on hearing the voice of God. <laughs> yes, no, that is so good. And it's interesting because this is in, a, in alignment with a message I heard today. And the pastor was pretty much talking about how blessings take work. <laughs> The oh, blessings yeah. of God take work. And so sometimes we're just like, okay, we're going to pray for it. And then it's just going to magically appear, right? We, and sometimes if we don't see that magically appear, then we're just like, oh, well, I'm, this must not be God. So let me just, you know, stay stuck and stay in rumination trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -mm. No, it takes, we got to walk. We got to work. It yes. is what it is. <laughs> yes. no, that, that is so good. That is so, so good. So of course we cannot have you on this show without letting you sprinkle just a little bit of your marketing expertise okay. on here. And so for those of you who are listening and watching, please take notes because this is probably one of the few times that you will be able to hear some gems from Kiara without giving her some serious coins. Come so, on now. <laughs> We are just gonna gonna ask her just a little bit um, because for me um, as a PR agency owner, a lot of times people get publicity and marketing mixed up and I always like to remind people it is not the same thing. So Kiara, how do you define uh, marketing and social media marketing specifically? Yeah, so I believe it's really marketing is the positioning of you in front of your targeted audience with the intention to convert them. And conversions could be with brand awareness. It could be with subscribing to an email list. It could be, and what I love is getting paid. Um, but it's really positioning people, positioning yourself in front of your ideal audience so that you can convert whatever it is, whatever offer it is that you have. Yes, yes, that's excellent. So yeah, so marketing is getting in front of that audience and the ways that you get in front of that audience to reach them and convert them. I love that. I love that definition. So why Kiara is social media such a critical point of, of marketing? And I, I don't want to assume that people know, you know, because social media is a big thing now, but what is the value of of really not just being on social media but having a social media strategy yeah so i like to tell people all the time why not utilize a free platform now you know free is you know subjective these days but it is free and you can utilize and maximize it for your business sometimes i hear people say well i'm successful without social media okay great you don't have to have social media because i have a marketing agency i understand that there are different channels to marketing right and there are some businesses that thrive on referral based marketing on network marketing word of mouth marketing email marketing, text message marketing, but there are some people who thrive on social media marketing, which is content marketing, I call that. But you can also put blogging and podcasting under content marketing. Um, I say that it's important to have a strategy because if you have the ability, because marketing is about numbers, how many people can you get in front of the quickest? If you have the ability to get your voice out in front of a large amount of people, um, I would say maximize that opportunity and go go about it with a strategy so that you know how to get in front of them in order to convert whatever it is that you're offering. Yes, yes. No, that that's excellent. So how do you define social media strategy? Like what are some, if you could just give some general um, components of strategy, because we use the word strategy. I think it's almost overused. It used yeah. to be one of my favorite words, but I really, <laughs> I really realized that, you know, we kind of throw that word out a lot and sometimes people don't really understand what it means. So how do you break down a strategy? Yes, that is such a great question. And I too hate that word. I don't hate it like much, much, but I think it's being overused. And yeah. I think some people hide behind that word as well. But nonetheless, when you have a social media marketing strategy, that means you have defined goals that you have for your company and your vision. So people think that, well, it's the amount of followers I want. And no, 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 sweetie. It's about what are your offers? What are you offering your client? Um, what do you want to portray to your client? Where do you want to take them afterwards? How do you want to get in front of them? It's really all of those components, but I really like to look at it through your visionary goals 
first and foremost. And once I recognize what your goals are for your company, then I can tell you, this is what you need to do with your audience. This is how you need to market to them. These are the kind of events that you need to, um, to have and to really engage and develop that relationship because that's really what it is with marketing. Sales is one thing. PR is another thing. Marketing is really building that relationship with potential clients and customers. Yes, no, that that's excellent. And I love that you said tying it to your overall business goals, because a lot of times that is what is going to direct what you decide to do, because you need to make sure that you are accomplishing your ultimate goal, because if you have a bunch of followers and a bunch of engagement, but it's not the type of engagement that you're looking for, or the people are not clicking buy or purchase, then, you know, you're not accomplishing that overall goal. So you have to make sure that what you're doing is actually getting you the result that you're looking for. That's excellent. That is excellent. So for how about for people who are kind of have that social media burnout and they're just like, I don't have time to be doing reels. I don't have time to, you know, take these amazing pictures. I don't have budget to be getting these photo shoots every month. Like where can I, you know, is there even any point in me being on social media if I'm not at that stage? What do I do? Yeah, so one, I would ask you, how are you making money in your business? Because if you don't have time to invest into marketing, especially through a free platform, I would question where you are in business. Now, there are some businesses who say, why do I need to get on social media? Because I've built up such a great, you know, repertoire, reputation, and I've, you know, generated hundreds of thousands, if not millions without social media marketing. And that's great because some businesses thrive through different channels of marketing. And though I have a social media marketing agency, guess what? This is not the only channel that I use for marketing. And so I'll say that and I would say, okay, so where are you investing? Because you have to market somewhere. So where are you marketing? And I would dare to say, how much are you going to spend and invest in there? And chances are you'll probably get a greater return on social media than you are in those other ways, honestly. But like I said, it's dependent on the type of company. But when I hear those kind of people, I'm like, oh, are you are you just new in business? Have you even reached your financial goals yet? Because you probably haven't because it takes work. It really does. Whether you're marketing on social media, word of mouth, referral networking, influencer marketing, you got to put in work. And if you don't want to put in work on the free platforms, I, I would question, maybe you have a huge budget that you can throw into paid advertisement and, and it works and that's awesome. But um, we you gotta be marketing somewhere. <laughs> yes, yeah, no, that, that's such a great point. Such a great point. I'm glad that you, that you brought that, that clarity. So do you recommend people kind of scheduling, you know, their content all at one time or, you know, what, it, what are your, what are your recommendations for that? Yes. So um, I get it. Okay. I get it because I have my own brand. I have my own company and I actually manage social media for other companies. So because I do that, I've done all the things, right? And I think the easiest, most stress-free way to go about social media is however it is stress-free for you. Because some people, if they don't have a strategy, the idea of planning content will stress them out. And guess what they will do? They won't post anything. But if you say, hey, just post as you go, go for it. I think you should start where you are first. And when you have the ability to invest into like a consultation with a marketing strategist, then I would say get that strategy so you know what you're scheduling. But if you are a busy person, and you don't want to be on social media for two or three hours every day trying to make a post, schedule that content and make your life easy. Oh my gosh, stop complicating your life. <laughs> yes, no, that that is so good. That is so good. I, I really like that you said you have to know what works for you because everybody does not, you know, everybody functions differently, learns differently, and certain things stress people out more than other people. So I think that's that's definitely good to to have the system that that works for you. That is that is so so good. So when it comes to deciding which social media platform is best, how do you recommend making that determination? Is that something that you should do without a social media strategist or are there ways that you can kind of organically start to to figure that out? Yeah, you can, no, 
Yeah, you can definitely figure it out on your own first. Now, it requires you to have been marketing in different places, first and foremost. So if you know that, hey, you've been marketing on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube, but for some reason, all your people come from Facebook, bingo, you need to focus on Facebook. Just really look at, and that's why it's important to look at your metrics and your analytics. And you see, you need to ask your um, clients questions. How did you find out about me? I, I, listen, if you are a client of mine, I'm asking you 10,000 questions. Why? Because I'm always doing market research. I want to know where, I want to spend my time on the platform that makes sense the most. Yes. And so you can really look at your analytics and say, man, most of these people came from Instagram. Let me be serious about Instagram. Let me rebrand on Instagram. Let me be more consistent. Let me post more on Instagram because that's what my people are. Now you can still, you know, post on Facebook or what have you, but you recognize where your target audience is. And it really depends on who they are. Um, because if you have, you know, um, busy moms, a lot of moms are scrolling. Okay. They scrolling on Instagram. All right. They might not be talking and creating YouTube videos all day long, but actually they might be watching YouTube videos and their kids are. So it really depends on your market and where they are and maybe on LinkedIn. So, but you can see where have the bulk of your people come from and focus on there. Um, and if you're like, I don't know just yet, start where you're most comfortable, where you feel like you can be the most consistent. Cause some people get really grandiose and they're like, well, I'm a, I'm a post a YouTube video every single day. No, you're not because you don't even know what their life is like. <laughs> All that editing, no, you're not. So if you can make a, a Twitter post every single day and people follow you, just go there. Start where you can so that you can get the, uh, the analytics and the metrics. Yes. Yeah, and I will add to be, um, I, I stop in-person coaching with this program, but ideas to invoices, it will give you a strategy when you're starting from zero. So, and I tell people all the time, hey, the first 90 days, it's really about the research. It's really about getting your data. So you implement the strategy that I've given you because you don't have one. So I'll give you one and then we'll see what's happening from there. But understand that even when you start mark, if, even when you start um, working with a marketing agency um, or what have you in a consultant, guess what? The first, the first couple of weeks, if not months, it's just the testing to really see what's actually happening first yeah. and foremost. So, and that's okay. Like I'm okay with that. And I'm okay with you starting there. Um, I have a program for that, but then when you get on the phone with me and you want a strategy, yes, please have done some work already. <laughs> yes. You're going to waste no. your time in mine. Yeah. Okay. Right, right. No, that that's good. That is really good. So yes, you definitely want to know exactly the type of service that you need so mm -hmm. that you can know how you can get, get the best return on, on your investment. So along with that, Kiara, how would you, what advice would you give for, for business owners who are looking to bring on a social media strategist and what are some tips that you can give them to make sure they're bringing on the person that's the best fit for them? Oh my gosh. I love that you said that because I'm actually creating a program just for that, a workshop, actually what to do before you hire a social media manager. Mm. And I just say that this is so important and we don't talk about this enough, but the issue that I see happening, even with coaches and consultants, they're like, I'm tired of doing social media. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to scale my business. And so they go and hire a marketing agency or social media manager. And I say, they hate everything. They don't die. Out. Why? Because you didn't have your stuff together. Okay. You didn't have your documents together so that your social media manager, you want them to go pick through everything and search and find and that's great, but I hope you're paying them to do that. But mm -hmm. a lot of times these companies and these business owners, you know, these first time six figure earners do not have all of their back end stuff together to be able to bring on a new team member. So you have to know one, what, what is the vision of your company? Are you comfortable with the offers that you have? Are they converting or do you want your social media manager to magically get you all these conversions with a sales process that you don't even have in place? OK, it's so many different things. <laughs> but one, I would say, make sure you have a secure sales process because a social media manager is not your sales consultant. Now, if you're really great at marketing, you're going to get conversions. And yeah. I'm grateful that with my clients, we do. But guess what? Even then, I'm like, y'all still need a sales process. Praise the Lord, I'm on your team. But you need a sales process and it's not there. Now, this landing page is working and it's doing what it's doing. But what's your sales process? So I would say have that. 
have your documents, your 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 pictures and videos, your content ready for your social media manager to to go through so that they can post it and don't have them, you know, scrambling to look for your content. Yes, no, that that's excellent. That's excellent. So what are there any uh, programs or tools that you recommend that will will be helpful if you are planning to pass your social media management over to to someone else? Yeah, absolutely. So if you just want to have your content in one place, use Google Drive, Dropbox, you know, those are easy, accessible in different areas. If you want to um, work on task management or project management, Asana is great, ClickUp, Trello, Monday.com. Those are all great systems that you can use and you can get the ball rolling from there. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Kiara, this has been an amazing conversation. I hope that everyone watching and listening was taking notes because everything that Kiara shared was, was amazing. And she definitely gave you some free tips and some things that you can use and implement even from this episode. So thank you, Kiara, so, so much again for being with us today. So in closing, let's uh, share what you have going on. I know you have have something a program in the works right now so just wanted to give you some an opportunity to, to talk about that yeah so I have a couple of things you guys know my five pillars so through motherhood I'm actually um, building my team my board of directors my directors and my volunteers for my nonprofit mommy shower so right now if you are interested in furthering the mission of prioritizing self-care for moms and making sure it's kind of like a, a baby shower for moms. You want to gift moms with the things that they need and you're interested in that mission, I would say go to www.mommyshowerinc.com and uh, just fill out that form and we're going to be having a interest meeting coming up soon. It'll be virtual and in person. And if you're interested in marketing services, if you're like, hey, I'm ready to get that strategy, I'm ready to take my business to the next level, I would love or my team would love to talk to you. So just book a discovery call on our website, which is mtmcreativeimaging.com. Excellent. Yes. And we will definitely put your website in the show notes so everyone can follow that. And where can people follow you? Yes. If you're interested in following me, follow me on Instagram, specifically my stories. That's where I live at y'all. Okay. So follow me at Kiara, K-I-A-R-A-J Mason and follow me there and let's connect. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kiara. Thank you for joining us, everyone, for another episode of Confidence and Creativity. My name, again, is Samantha McCoy. I am the CEO of Mission Key Communications, and you can follow me on my Instagram at smccoyjoy. So thank you all so much for joining, and we'll see you again next week for our next episode. Take care, everyone. Bye.